Hello, trail seekers, and welcome to another exciting episode of the Learn True Health podcast. You're going to love today's interview with Dr. Greg Eckel. He's a naturopathic physician that specializes in helping people heal and support neurological conditions. We're going to talk about Parkinson's, ADHD, and, and how to support the body if someone's experiencing any of these issues or if you want to prevent because prevention is the most important thing we can do. He goes through his uh, functional program and the things that you can start doing today to support your body's ability to be the healthiest it can possibly be. Now he mentions a few things and I really want to make sure that you know about the things that I love that he sees great results working with his clients. So there's three quick things I want to mention. One, he talks about the importance of using saunas if you have uh, heavy metal toxicity because you can sweat in a sauna to help the body remove fat soluble toxins instead of having to tax your liver and that can have a host of problems for people especially if they already are bombarded with toxins. So we have an environment that has created heavy metal toxicity in many people and if you have any neurological conditions such as ADHD, depression, any kind of imbalance or if you know that genetically in your family a lot of people are predisposed to developing Parkinson's or MS, you'll want to support a healthy brain by doing gentle detox through sauna therapy. You can go to my website, learntruehealth.com, type in sauna, listen to some of my interviews that we've done specifically around how to use sauna therapy and how to sweat to release these toxins in a gentle way. I got a sunlight and sauna almost two years ago and I have absolutely loved it. It's played a big role in my personal healing journey. I really feel a difference and using it has, has made such an impact on my life that I keep telling people about it. Sunlighten has given us a great deal. Give them a call and say that you are a listener of the Learn True Health podcast with Ashley James, and they always have a special for us. They give us free shipping, and sometimes the shipping is $500 if you buy one of the wooden saunas. Now, they do have a personal sauna that's portable that you can tuck away into your closet where you're not using it, and it is non toxic and ultra low EMF and you get results with it. So you don't have to worry about having enough space. I interviewed Dr. Mark Hyman on the show and he said that he lives in a small condo. He doesn't have enough space for a big wooden sauna. And, uh, and so he has their solo system and it works wonderfully. I do have the wooden one cause we did have the space and I love their three in one sauna which gives you all three frequencies. Many saunas only do far infrared. Theirs does near and mid, which gives you anti-aging benefits as well and pain and inflammation reducing benefits as well. So check out Sunlight and Saunas. Give them a call. Tell them you're a listener of the Learn True Health podcast with Ashley James and ask about their specials. On top of the free shipping, they usually have some kind of great deal in addition to that that they give us. I like it when they give $100 off their accessories because I love the non-toxic bamboo pad for the uh, wooden sauna. That's really comfortable. Excellent. So that was the first thing because he talks about the results he's getting in his clinic with his patients using uh, sauna therapy. The second one is Medterra CBD. I really recommend checking out Medterra CBD. They give the listeners a great discount as well. Use coupon code LTH. I interviewed the founder of Medterra CBD. There's so many CBD companies out there and there's only a handful that are organic that will publish their uh, tests to prove that there's no heavy metals, that there's uh, their, their CBD is clean. And I've, I've personally used many different types of CBDs and theirs, I feel uh, in terms of a tincture, in terms of that concentrated extract, I get the best results. So that's Medterra CBD. Use the coupon code LTH because they do give us a great discount. And you can go to learntrail.com, type in CBD to listen to that interview to learn more about their farming practices and how they make it, knowing that it is a very clean form of CBD. And it's also 
uh, guaranteed that there's no THC. So if you do drug testing, you can um, know that. And he does talk about that in our interview. And the third thing is the magnesium soak. And he also talks today, Dr. Eckel talks today about how important magnesium is for brain health. And know that you can soak in magnesium and gain the benefits without needing to take a supplement orally because many people have adverse reactions to taking an oral magnesium supplement. But when you soak in it, you can absorb grams of magnesium and get all the benefits in a very gentle way. So listen to my interview with Kristen Bowen. I've done a few interviews with her. She was 78 pounds, I believe, and having 30 seizures a day. And my soaking in magnesium was one of the most important things she did to get her health back. So it absolutely helps with neurological conditions because the brain needs magnesium, just like many other nutrients that Dr. Eckel talks about today. You can go to livingthegoodlifenaturally.com. That is the magnesium soak website, livingthegoodlifenaturally.com. Click on the magnesium soak jug picture when it first comes up. And then use the coupon code LTH as in Learn True Health. LTH just gives you a discount. And then you can get that jug of magnesium. Come into the Learn True Health Facebook group. We'd love to see you there. You can ask questions of the other listeners who have sunlight and saunas, who've tried the Medterra CBD, or who use the magnesium soak. Many listeners are using all three and getting some great results and Dr. Eckel shares that and many other suggestions today. So enjoy today's show. Thank you so much for being a listener and have yourself a fantastic rest of your day. Welcome to the Learn True Health Podcast. I'm your host, Ashley James. This is episode 377. We are back from the summer. Labor Day just happened. I am super stoked to get back into interviewing. Listeners who uh, are in our Facebook group were telling me that they, they've been jonesing, they've missed the show. I know I took a little vacation for about a week and uh, hung out with my son and my husband and we went swimming and got lots of sun and it was wonderful. But I couldn't wait to come back and interview Dr. Greg Eckel, who's a naturopathic physician in Portland, Oregon. He specializes in neurology. You are going to love today's interview. I'm so excited to have Dr. Dr. Eckel here to share with us how we can prevent and reverse and support people who are experiencing Parkinson's, um, muscul- um, MS and other uh, neurological conditions like migraines, traumatic brain injuries, headaches, uh, and even post-stroke recovery. This is going to be exciting. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I love to dive in uh, to learn a bit more about the doctor before the doctor starts teaching us about how we can better um, heal our bodies. Because understanding what happened in your life that led you to become the physician and the healer that you're, you are allows us to understand the philosophy and the lens at which you look through life and in order to help us. So what happened in your life that made you want to become an atropathic physician? Well, in the early 90s in Portland, Oregon, I was a preschool teacher. And I was watching at that point, I was in the Montessori uh education system. Nice. And I, and it was the beginning of the attention deficit and hyperactivity disorder, <laughs> uh, you know, on, you know, onslaught. And, you know, Big Pharma had discovered, hey, there's this untapped market called children, let's drug them. And it was, it was really disheartening. You know, I was an assistant in a classroom. Uh, I had, my poster child was this boy, Michael, and he was definitely, uh, he was rambunctious. He, I like to say, included others in his learning. And, you know, he was definitely, you know, wild guy out on the playground in the classroom. He didn't, you know, in the Montessori uh, classroom, you can choose your own material and bring it back to your desk. So Michael was always kind of in at other people's tables. The head teacher advocated to the parents, hey, I think uh, Michael has some attentional issues. I think he should go get him checked out. They took him to the pediatrician. Lo and behold, they diagnosed him with attention deficit and hyperactivity disorder. And then they medicated him with Ritalin. And the first day that he got back in the classroom, 
you know, he definitely – he slumped over in his chair. Uh, he definitely stayed put. He was in his chair and at his table. But that little light, that shine in the eye was gone. And I just thought there's got to be a better way to help these kids. And at that time, I um, also was a junk food vegetarian. And I wasn't <laughs> feeling very healthy. And – a bunch of paths led me to the naturopathic school where these people, these physicians, they treated my diet. And boy, it, it was like a light bulb went on. Like, wow, actually, if I went back to school, I wanted to be in service to people. And so many different paths led me into naturopathic medicine. So I have so, um, you know, not a day goes by that I'm not grateful for the for the experience. And, you know, I just thought, you know, I really got into helping kids with attentional issues when I started. But that's really what took me there was that that picture of Michael just being really just drugged and slumped over and saw the sparkle gone out of his eye. So what happened to Michael? Did they just keep drugging him or did they... Trying. Yeah, they just basically, you know, it would be great to follow up. You know, I, I got into um, medical school. He was my poster child and motivation for going through in addition to, you know, family members and other people with health issues. Um, but, you know, it, it, what I discovered, I got into neurofeedback and that's kind of what led me into neurology and studying the brain at that point. So that was 1996. Um, got my license in 2001, but you know, we really, you know, you look at the stats on these medications now, you know, I talked to counselors to, uh, in the high schools and over half the kids are mm. on some type of attentional, uh, medication. And it's almost like the kids have to be on them to keep up with the workload and demands. Um, you know, these are drugs that get traded at parties for, you know, to keep people awake. And I mean, you know, the, it's interesting, you know, how ubiquitous now it is in the culture um, for just having those attentional uh, issues. That's really sad. I've done a few interviews with people who shared about their childhood experiences. I've, I remember two off the top of my head with um, guests who shared their experiences with being put on these drugs when they were kids and that that's what led them to want to become holistic health practitioners because of the adverse side effects and the horrible nightmares mm -hmm. and the, the, the yeah. suicidal thoughts. I mean, don't like, – if a drug is going to make your teenager want to kill themselves, you know, because that's the side effect. I mean, there's something seriously wrong here. And then we'll continue to let them eat Cheetos and, you know, right. whatever junk food. We'll, we'll keep them on the, the standard Amer American diet or standard Canadian diet, st standard Australian diet. Wherever we are, it's pretty much the standardized <laughs> – flour, sugar, oil, hyper palatable foods that are horrible for the nervous system and just jack up the brain. And, and then we drug them down. It's kind of like taking uppers and downers. The uppers are the, are the food, the downers are the drugs. And right. it's a perfect system that the, that the big pharma gets to, gets to profit from. But when we take a, a child like Michael and we put him on a whole foods plant-based diet and remove the flour, remove the sugar, remove the hyperpalatable foods. It's the spark is back in their eyes and they are like, so they feel so much more grounded in their own body. I recently interviewed um, an expert on nootropics and he had adult ADD and it getting on Ritalin was life-changing for him. He loved it. He was so happy to be on it, but then the, his body became resistant to it. And, and then all of a sudden his thyroid just went completely through the floor and he got dementia because his, he had such low thyroid and it turns out it was a side effect of being on Ritalin for so many years. Have you ever heard that about that Ritalin being on these drugs can, can really drastically affect our hormone system? Well, sure. Yeah. You know, the, the medications are always counterintuitive, like we're giving legalize speed to kids that have hyperactivity issues and really when it works it works for five percent of the population and you know so that gentleman that you interviewed is probably one of the in the five percent i mean the medications really do help you hyper focus but um, what it's doing is it's waking up your prefrontal cortex and that's what the hyperactivity is a symptom of is the the 
child or the person is trying to wake themselves up because they have a low functioning uh, cortical you know, cortical brain waves. And so the medication wakes that up and is turning it back on. That's why it helps with your focus. Um, so you're just, you know, you're taking legalized speed. So that's a speeding up of your metabolism. So then your hypothalamus has to balance that out kind of the switchboard operator there in the middle, which is maintaining homeostasis, kind of coordinating your nervous system and your hormones. And so that's kind of the link of where that would come together for the individual that then, you know, oh. kind of had thyroid issues was out of the hypothalamus level of trying to balance out because they're getting this speed, which is ramping up the nervous system. And so there's, a, you know, the counterbalance is in the hormone realm. Right, because the thyroid is stimulating the, sorry, the hypothalamus is stimulating the pituitary to create the 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 thyroid the, the yeah tell it basically the hypothalamus is all the way at the top going okay thyroid make your stuff okay adrenals make your stuff okay um you know gonads make your stuff and so if you're if you're taking a, the ADD medication it's affecting the part of your brain that controls all your hormones yeah whoa yeah. That can be very dangerous down the road. But if you go to an yeah. MD, and this is me on my soapbox, if you go to an MD, they're treating symptoms. So they're going to treat five different symptoms with five different drugs. And then you've got lots of side effects from those. When it actually is a hypo, hypothalamus issue because it, that, it was a side effect originally of the ADD medication. And so right. you might end up with um, problems with the ability to produce uh, your hormones, uh, sex hormones later in life, your uh, steroidal hormones later in life, your thyroid hormone, you might end up with all these different conditions, all resulting from the ADD medication, a long term use, yeah. which we don't want. And, and everyone that's listening wants to do things naturally and support the body coming back into balance. So when someone feels like they have ADD, they, what they need to do is wake up the frontal cortex Um what can we do to stimulate healthfully, naturally the frontal cortex? Well, that well, that's one piece of it, right? So attentional issues, there's about nine different facets to to attention. And so when you look at it, the medication is only working for a small subset. And you know, when you look at what the the outcomes research shows is it doesn't change IQ. It doesn't actually change outcomes in schooling. Mm. Um, you know, so it's it is totally placating symptoms. Um, you know, people feel more in tune or maybe more flow, and and those are the folks that have that hypo functioning prefrontal cortex. So that's a small subset of folks. But you look at you know, well, what can you do naturally? Of course, the you know, eating a whole foods diet, getting the processed foods out, decreasing your sugar content. You know, the non sexy. But vital <laughs> components, which is your, you know, food is your best medicine. Um, so looking at that exercise, right, you get the blood flow. Well, what travels in the blood is the healing properties of the body. So you inform what's in the blood, but then you get the circulation going as well. Um, one of the things that I got in on one a little bit bigger with, you know, if you're having if your child is having significant, um, you know, issues in the classroom, you can get into neurofeedback. So I did that in the clinic here at Nature Cures for six years, which is hooking electrodes up. Uh, you get uh, feedback visually from a computer screen and you basically are training certain wave frequencies. So it's waking your brain up and naturally you're just doing it via a biofeedback or neurofeedback loop. I love that. I've, um, I did an interview, I feel like about two years ago with a man that created a biofeedback company. And he said it was like, it was like the kids are playing video games with their brain. They hook it up, yeah. they hook it up to their brain and they stare at a monitor and then they're you, they're watching like what they do with their brain moves the things on the screen. So it, it feels like a video game and then they get amazing results. And he had actually, he started it, he started it because, uh, he was working with nonverbal, children on the spectrum of autism and doing the biofeedback, they were able to help them 
improved to the point of like being able to feed themselves, clothe themselves, talk. I mean, it was amazing. The kind of results. Yeah. Yeah. He was working with, I think some like big university study and then that motivated him to go out and start his own company. And now anyone can go and do it. And, um, but it's, it's really fun. What we're, what we're seeing with the brain and, uh, and with, with neurofeedback. And so you started, you started doing that. It, It also reminds me of, um, an, a pediatric occupational therapist um, I'm friends with who told me that on the playgrounds, you know, when we were kids, there was the swings, there are the swings, and then there's the tire swing that goes, that goes around, right? And now she says it's a crime that a lot of schools are taking the swings away because hmm. she said that a, the children will self-regulate. It, and you've probably seen children do this where they'll spin around in a circle. Just They just know to spin around until they get dizzy or they'll ask you to spin them around, or they'll get on that tire swing, or they'll get on the, you know, right, that merry-go-round right. that, that some um, places still have, some parks still have, and they'll just spin and spin and spin. And she says, neurologically, when they need they need their brain to kind of be ramped up, they'll, they know to spin themselves. And children who like to get on the swing and just gently go back and forth, they need to calm down their nervous system. And it's funny because I, that's totally me, I was all, I always went on the swing. I just needed to be calmed and br- brought down. And she said that children would go in recess and they would sort of self-regulate their nervous system, whether they need to be ramped up or ramped down. And now they're cutting um, recess times. They're taking these things out of the playgrounds. And so children aren't able to self-regulate as well. Oh, yeah, totally. That makes total sense. Or even them cutting you know, PE class, physical education, so that there's not, that's not occurring anymore. Right. Mm. And then the kids get more ramped up. They're not able to self-correct. And then there's more medication prescribed. Right. It's like, oh, what a catch 22 here. Right. Right. So, um, you were mentioning the non-sexy ways that children can, can better help themselves uh, by eating a good diet and, uh, you know, getting enough sleep, not allowing your children to drink caffeine, caffeinated beverages or sugar, um, making sure they go to bed on time. I would say also um, decreasing screen time as well is a big one because I that does really ramp up their nervous system. And then the biofeedback, what – can you give us a few more things that you um, – have seen work really well for children with ADHD before we move on to talk about Parkinson's? Sure. Well, on, I want to, you know, really reiterate on the screen time as well. I mean, there was a big summit that I participated in called the digital dementia summit. There's Hmm. research coming out of France showing um, kids gray matter of their brain is shrinking similar to dementia uh, with screen time greater than seven hours a day. And some kids are, on screens greater than seven hours a day. And we're seeing on imaging, on brain imaging, that their brains are looking as as if they have dementia of Mm. a a 65 year old. So this is significant, um, you know, significant uh, component. Of course, coming from the naturopathic physician is get out in nature, let them get their hands and feet dirty, you know, have them run around without shoes, um, as long as that's (laughs) a safe thing to do, um, you know, and really get out and actually for the adults to go out and play with them. You know, I think just um, fostering more play, uh, more imaginative, more imagination as well, just outside in the natural world. Um, These are big things. And, you know, we live in the northwest of the United States where it rains for a good portion of the year. But as my kids say, there's no such thing as bad weather, only bad gear. Um, (laughs) And so you should be able to get out in any climate and get out into nature. You know, it's really important. I interviewed a man who's lost, um, I believe, 200 pounds. Now it's more than 200 pounds. I just interviewed him a few months ago. And he was like, I think he was like close to 500 pounds three years ago. And he is, um, he lives in Canada, in Alberta, where they get crazy weather. And he started walking every day, no matter what, no matter the weather. Mm. And at first, I mean, he was, it was, he was so uncomfortable being, you know, 500 pounds, right? Um, 
and he just did it. He just got out and walked in negative 30 degrees and blizzard or raining or super hot, you know, 100 degree weather. Uh, he just did it every day as much as he could. And, and that and stopping eating sugar and flour for lots of vegetables. And, um, and yeah, he just, he's so healthy now. He says he'll never, ever miss a, a day of walking again. And that really inspired me that, uh, you know, that I realized how many excuses I bring up when, uh, when I, when I want to go outside, um, I see one cloud. Oh no, it's, it's too cloudy. I'm not going to go outside. So <laughs> I need to like, you know, sure. suck it up and get out there. We just, um, just this morning, right before the interview, I took my son to a pick farm and, uh, we met some friends and we picked zucchini and kale and corn and potatoes and all, all kinds of great stuff that we basically bought a week's worth of vegetables for $30. It's all organic and it's fresh out of the ground. And my son picked up, picked bugs and ate kale right out, right off the plant. And, um, nice. yeah, that's like, that is unbelievable. So great. I definitely recommend people check out farmer's markets and you pick farms and take your kids with you. Cause it is, it's fun and they can run around and it's so much better than TV. And kids that we brought kids that never eat vegetables and they were eating vegetables in the, when kids can actually touch them growing out of the ground, they'll eat them. So we had a, we had a lot of fun uh, doing that. And it's really allowed me to have a great appreciation for the farmers that grow our food because it takes a lot of work to, to pull it out of the ground. Um, any, any other advice around um, ADHD for children before we move on? Yeah, sure. A big one on brain nutrient, this will touch base with the neuro neurologic discussion later, is our omega-3 fatty acids, mm. and in particular DHA. It, they're lacking in all of our diets, and uh, DHA is that active constituent of those omega-3s that feed the brain, and, uh, and children respond beautifully to those. They're anti-inflammatory. They soothe the brain. They hit the satiety center. They help with energy and focus, um, and just they're, it's just major brain food. So that, that would be a biggie to, to look at, investigate your diet. Yeah, what's the yeah. best way to get it in our diet? Because, you know, everyone says fish oil. I'm not opposed to fish oil. It's just, um, you know, there's so many low-quality fish oils out there. And, and, and since the fish get their EFAs from algae, we could just skip the skip the murdering well, of fish and go straight to the algae. So I don't know. What is, what is the best way to get DHA? Well, the algae oil is a great way to do it, but the DHA, these, the DHA and EPA are the active constituents. And so, you know, uh, as, as a, as a past vegetarian for over half my life as well, um, you know, flax oil, et cetera, these are hard, they're higher omega threes, but we're only converting a certain percentage of those into the DHA and EPA. So it's about one to 5% of total omega-3s from plant-based uh, sources go, one to 5% go into DHA and about five to 15% go into EPA. And those are the ones that we have the most research on. Now I'm a whole plant practitioner. I love the whole plant. So definitely getting it that way, flax seeds, um, chia seeds, these have omega-3 fatty acids in them. It just, you know, you would have to be consuming so much of those plants to get an adequate dose of EPA and DHA and DHA in particular for the, for the brain. So you know, I definitely, I do recommend supplementing those. You want to know your source. Um, you know, they're, they, a lot of companies do uh, a really good job of screening for heavy metal toxicity, pesticides, et cetera, because these fish do bioaccumulate uh, toxins and fat. Mm -hmm. uh, so you definitely want to know your source. Um, you know, one of the better ones out on the market, at least in the States, is uh, Nordic Naturals. I have no affiliation with the company. Um, I just like their product. Um, but you want to know your source for sure. So it is, you know, it's not like go to the, you know, uh, bulk discount supplement <laughs> store and, and get those because, you know, you're not, you really don't know what you're getting and it, you could do more harm than good with that. Yeah, there's only a handful of companies that will make their fish oil uh, supplements in a nitrogen chamber, which prevents yeah. the um, oil from oxidizing. And that's one of the companies that I get my EFAs from does that. And so that's my big recommendation for quality is find out if your if your company does it 
uh, produces the EFA in a nitrogen chamber to prevent the oxygen from oxidizing the, the oil. So you're saying if children have ADHD, the best way to, to get DHE, DHA into them for their brain health is through fish oil because it's her, it's, it's just, they would have to consume so much flax and chia. Correct. Yeah. It would be really hard for them to get adequate levels to yeah. actually make a difference there. Yeah. I'm, I'm plant, I eat plant-based and my husband's vegan, but we're, do, we're not dogmatic. I mean, if, if you know what I mean, it's like, if, yeah, if this sometimes is what if it's a needs. medicinal quality right. and that, that's kind of the, the distinction we made in, in my household as well is like, you know, if it's a, if it's a medicinal quality item, um, it might be something that you want to look at because that is, that's a big, that's a showstopper. You know, they're called essential is essentially, we can't make them in our bodies. Mm -hmm. We can only get them from our food. Um, and so that's, that's one aspect that, you know, you want to look at. And why is DHA and EPA so important? Is it because 70% of the brain is made from these healthy fats? I've heard that like, I think 70% of the white matter of the brain is made from cholesterol. So it's like a major part of the brain is made from these fats. Is that, is it because yeah. the brain's made from it? So we're like just building healthy brain or does it play a different role like in protecting it? It, you know, we really could call each other fat heads and it is a fat storage <laughs> and we need these really beneficial fats to help with as building blocks for more fat. So these are, you know, essential in a lot of different processes. It's not that the DHA is the substance that is the brain is made of, but it is definitely the brain food mm. of choice. Mm. Yeah. Awesome. So you must have some really great experiences helping children um, recover from this, like, you know, uh, YouTube dementia and, and DH, uh, D, uh, ADHD. Yeah. Um, but you've also have great, great experience helping adults recover from Parkinson's and MS and other neurological conditions. Let's talk about that. Sure. Well, and this, uh, is a more recent. So I've been in practice since 2001. So I had a very, I still have a very eclectic practice here at Nature Cures Clinic in Portland. And, um, you know, you kind of fast forward uh, through about 15, 16 years of clinical practice. And lo and behold, my wife gets a very rare uh, neurologic condition called Kurtzville jacob disease. Um, which is a prionic, um, prionic activity of the brain, very rare, one in a million people, about 300 cases a year in North America. And I, you know, as loving husband and physician, um, trying to swing for the fence of like, well, there's no known cure for this. Uh, the diagnosis is basically wait until she dies oh and gosh. then we'll do a brain op autopsy and will confirm the diagnosis. Um, you know, it was a, just a crazy that, and you know, she did pass last year. Um, I'm so sorry to hear that. Yeah. Thank you. I, you know, it's been, um, uh, you know, life is full contact and, uh, I think things happen for reasons and, you know, that I, you know, it just, definitely lifted the veil for me on, you know, our, the illusion of our world and, you know, uh, kind of reinstated my faith, uh, you know, big things. Like it was a big process that I've gone through and, you know, what I've got as a result, uh, you know, definitely a lot of heartfelt gratitude for this world and our plane of existence and the physicality of our bodies and the planet and our universe. And, you know, I like to say, as I lecture and speak, you know, we, we have this illusion of separateness and, you know, we really are all one, uh, just pretending to be separate in this current time. And, um, you know, this process, this process that I went through really, you know, really solidified that for me. And, you know, I've, wound up with a bunch of gifts, what I'm calling Soraya's gifts. That's her name, mm. uh, was her name Soraya. And, you know, it, uh, you know, what do you say? I mean, you know, life happens. It's, I'm not the first person to lose the love of their life. And, um, but it definitely, you know, is humbling, uh, when it happens to you. Um, 
and you know, I've got um, you know, just newfound um, energy, purpose, passion, uh, focus to you know, again, help more people. Um, it's really you know, solidified my purpose and service to to others and share what I've learned along the way. So on as a practitioner and as a being on the planet, definitely, um, you know, uh, sometimes I feel like I, I'm an ambassador for grief. Um, you know, we don't do grief very well mm -hmm. as a culture and um, I'm, I guess, more comfortable with it. So as it arises, um, I'm fine sharing and showing and, and just being with it. And so I think definitely has informed me as a practitioner with more empathy for others and what they are going through. Um, and just as a being on the planet, um, having a loss, uh, and you know, grief touches on grief for a lot of people. So it's interesting to see what surfaces for others when you bring up a loss like this. Um, and it really, I went looking for solutions and, um, remedies and, you know, really didn't have, there's no known cure. Um, and you look at chronic neurodegeneration and there's no known cure across the board. We're talking, you know, Kurtzfeld Jacob disease, which is mad cow syndrome in people. It's scrappy and goats. Uh, it's chronic wasting disease and deer. So these prionic activities, which are misfolded proteins in uh, central nervous system and brain matter. Well, you get in on the prionic diseases uh, textbook, which I have the second edition of that. And you realize, oh, all of these neurodegenerative states, dementia, Alzheimer's, anxiety can be categorized in here as well, um, can be related to prionic activity, which are misfolded proteins. And uh, we don't have great solutions for that, um, which, you know, is evidence for Parkinson's. I started with Parkinson's. Uh, I have a book coming out uh, called Shake It Off, an integrative approach to Parkinson's syndrome uh, or Parkinson's solutions. And um, with that, uh, we we look at, well, what can we do for these folks? And I put it in on my clinic, um, you know, the different things that I was learning for Soraya. And lo and behold, we're, we're getting results for folks. I'm not saying I'm curing Parkinson's, but uh, we are showing improvement of quality of life. We're showing reversal, uh, stability, halting symptom development, reversal of symptom development, and improvement of functioning. And so these are very encouraging things. Um, you know, we've got some time to put in on really perfecting the protocol, but I did develop a, it's called a fancy approach to Parkinson's, uh, capital F-A-N-C, so fancy. We can talk about that in a moment, but, you know, it all comes out of my, you know, personal trials and tribulations of helping, you know, looking for solutions in a chronic disease that doesn't have any answers. Um, so, it, you know, I was talking to the world's experts on prionic activities, uh, got in touch with Case Western here in the United States where they have the uh, prionic uh, surveillance center of North America. I didn't even know one existed. Um, in their study, it's an observational study. They have had 22 people enrolled in their study. So, you know, we don't really have a lot of great information or data. And I, you know, uh, got to live with that condition for two years. Um, you know, it was a rapidly progressing dementia, you know, in two months time, Soraya, she was a certified nurse, midwife, nurse practitioner, uh, here in the clinic and, you know, radical women's healthcare provider, um, you know, just to had such joy and, uh, love for people and, you know, never in a million years would you think some, a woman would come out of her annual exam kind of dancing and singing and laughing. And it's like, wow, like what a gift, uh, Soraya had for people. Um, so, you know, she was this sharp, sharp practitioner and, you know, all of a sudden started having memory issues and we wound up, uh, in the clinic staying later. And she had been in practice here five years at that point. I'm like, Hey honey, what, what is up? Like never have we stayed, you know, like you're, I get it. You're being meticulous with your notes, but why, you know, what is going on? So, you know, we started looking at, you know, maybe some perimenopause hormone changes or, uh, maybe mold issues, 
um, you know, you look at things that could be creating memory issues for folks and, um, you know, you kind of go down these rabbit holes of most prominent issues. And, you know, I, after about a month of that, I started taking her. I was like, gosh, this is beyond what I can do here. Um, it's not these things, you know, it's not uh, hormone imbalance. It's not uh, mold toxicity. Um, you know, it's not a level of toxicity. So, you know, go out into Western uh, approach just to get some idea. And, you know, they're, they're saying, oh, it's a psychotic break. And it's like, this is not a psychotic break. This woman was, you know, top of her game, you know, just a month ago. And, you know, so kind of went through that process. And then, you know, the differential starts getting more ominous and ominous of like, oh, it could be, you know, uh, autoimmune encephalitis or, uh, you know, Kurtzville Jacob disease. And, um, you know, they're telling me, you know, so during this time, you know, Soraya is in rapid decline. And then basically in two months time, she's not able to talk like she's gone oh my into gosh. total dementia. And, um, you know, it's like, wow, we're nonverbal. We don't, we can't communicate now. It's like, what in the world is going on? So, you know, it was really, it was a tough, tough go. And, you know, we surrounded her with a, lots of love and, you know, I swang for, you know, did a little swing for the fence as a baseball analogy of, you know, let me dig deep here and see what I can come up with. And, you know, the, the trail, I've got this, you know, component of Soraya's gifts of, I think we can help a lot of people with chronic neurodegeneration as a result of this. Mm. Unfortunately, it didn't help her out, but, uh, but we've got, you know, maybe trying to turn my personal tragedy into this gift for the world. And, uh, so that's what we're putting forth. Now, I always thought mad cow disease or mad cow syndrome was transmiss transmissible, meaning it could be passed on from one person to another, from one animal to another. Is this something she she caught? Well, so that's the million dollar question. And, and you know, when you read about prions, they always put this infectious prion um, before this adjective. And... I think it's incorrect um, to think of it as an infectious agent. Now, uh, now I say that it's total theory on my part, but it's a theory on their part as well. So um, Stanley Prusiner out of uh, a lab in California, he got the Nobel Prize in 1987 in medicine for the discovery of these prions. So, And he was really uniquely positioned to be one of the only people on the planet to be able to figure this out. He was a bench biochemist. And at the time, they thought prions were a virus, like a retrovirus. And, you know, he had spent 20, 30 years in the lab studying viruses and bacteria. And he said, you know, these are not behaving like that. And so he stuck to his guns, but two decades of ridicule in the scientific community for him. Um, thankfully, he was awarded the uh, Nobel Prize in medicine for that. But, you know, he put this infectious uh, adjective on there. So when you read any literature on it, um, you know, it was, it's also called Kudru. Um, in Papua New Guinea, there was a tradition where the grandmothers, mothers, and girls would eat the brains of the ancestors that passed um, in honoring and um, in commemoration and honoring of those that passed. And I, I think they've stopped that tradition because in the brains were these prions. And so it was a, a very rapid transmission of prionic activity by ingesting those brains. If it was transmissible from cow to human in the 80s, there were about 3 million pounds of tainted beef that were released in, in Europe. And there really – there was a slight uptick of Kurtzville Jacob, but not to the level that you would expect if these were infectious agents, as in something to catch. Now, there are those scientists that still think that they are infectious like a virus, that they can spread like that. But I, I think it's a little bit more complex. And these are not new proteins. I think these are archaic protein structures that have been on the planet since we began. And uh, the reason why I say that is they are so uniquely um, 
you know, on what they do is they they misfold these proteins misfold. And when you look at uh, tau proteins and amyloid plaques and alpha synuclein, these are other proteins that are misfolded disorders that are also in you know dementia and Alzheimer's and ALS. Uh, you know, so they're Parkinson's. So they're found in these other conditions of misfolding. Well, what happens is they get misconfigured and then they start signaling other proteins to start to do that. And that's quote unquote, I think why they call them infectious in that mm. there's a signaling unit that happens once they get misfolded. Now we don't know. And that's the issue with these disorders and diagnoses is, is that we don't know what the causative agent of misfolding is. It's like a domino effect. Exactly. Kind of like cancer. If the body yeah. can't clear it out, well, you know, one cancerous cell normally, I mean, every day our body clears cancer out. But if the we don't, that one little yeah. harmless cancer cell can become a whole tumor very quickly. So the domino effect is that one misfolded protein could trigger others to start misfolding. But why? And why isn't the body clearing them out it, right you know so and, and genetically not able to kill you know you can't kill them really either right so that that's the the unique property of these prions is um you know heat uh autoclaving um you know the the traditional ways of you know denaturing proteins don't work for these mm. so it sounds like we're just sort of at the beginning the pioneer yeah. days of understanding this. Did, now you found out, I mean, her, your wife uh, had a rapid decline yeah. and you found out uh, very um, deep into her diagnosis, what it was. Um, did you, did you find any therapies to prolong her life or ease her symptoms? Does what did, did you find anything in time that, helped her and uh, you noticed that helped well uh, not no no so okay. not not in her condition so you know what i put together is a process called the fancy approach so this is for all neurologic conditions but w f stands for functional so treating whole people not disease processes and this is also a very um profound difference between naturopathic medicine and maybe functional or integrative practitioners that come from a Western training um, in the naturopathic principles is the body can heal itself given the right information. And, um, you know, at the point uh, that we got this discovered with Soraya, I just feel like the process, it was so rapid and moving so quickly that there wasn't a way to pull it back. And, you know, we used, um, you know, really, I went super esoteric to very biochemical. So, you know, every level of treatment that you could think of, we, mm -hmm. we've we really put in, um, you know, just two decades in the field. I, I'm definitely very eclectic practitioner. So on that functional approach, it's really kind of a mindset change of, I think what the issue is, is that everybody's focused at end stage product or disease. And if you're only focusing at that, like for Parkinson's, just focusing on dopamine receptors and uh, the dopamine um, molecule, it's far too late. Like we've got to really got to have to go upstream. And one way of doing that is looking at the assessment. So the A in FANCY is, stands for assessment. And this is looking at molecular mimicry, like what else could be causing these symptoms in the body. Um, so I look at viruses, uh, cytomegalovirus, herpes simplex virus, Epstein-Barr virus. These things can mimic these protein misfolding uh, disorders. Um, we look at hormone balance because the hormones, as we were talking about with uh, attention deficit disorder and stimulating the prefrontal cortex, um, you know, that comes into the hypothalamus. Well, that balances the hormones and nervous system there. So hormones, you definitely want to have optimally balanced out for people. Heavy metal toxicity is another one, right? We store toxins in our fat. So we want to look at what gets stored in the fat. So you have to look at, I find cadmium, 
mercury, arsenic, and lead are the top four that I find in my patients, especially with neurodegenerative states. So mm. you got to get out the proverbial lead, so to speak. I have a, I have a quick question. If sure. cadmium, lead, arsenic, and mercury yeah. are stored in the fat tissue of the body, how do you do accurate heavy metal testing? Because I know you can do hair analysis, which really only reflects the last three months. Um, and blood wouldn't really, blood and urine wouldn't really do it if it's stored in the fat. Do you have to do a right. biopsy of fat? Like how, or you do you have to do a chelation agent? Yeah. So one of the things with hair analysis also, there's a, a lot of folks that have issues with metal toxicity, aren't able to secrete them in the hair follicle. So they're not able to get them out. And I see that a lot with kids on the autistic spectrum disorder. Um, you know, a lot, a lot of practitioners are only doing hair analysis. Well, it, it's not, um, it doesn't correlate well. And like you're saying, it's only three months. And, and also there's a genetic component where you're not able to actually excrete those through the hair follicle or eliminate them yourself. And so they get trapped in the body and that adds to the, the issue of the condition. So what we do, we do a pre and a post test. Um, there are different oral chelating agents like DMSA or um, IV therapy with a EDTA, which is the kind of the toxicology route of the agreed upon test to do, which is like a big magnet that goes into the blood that pulls mm. metals, but it also pulls essential minerals as well. So, right. um, you know, you have to you have to be very cautious uh, and do that correctly. Um it has been around, chelation has been around for 50 years plus, um, done with a trained practitioner is very safe and it is super effective as well. I would agree with you. We should absolutely go to a naturopathic physician if we want to do chelation because it's kind of like using a nuclear bomb on the body to release the heavy metal. And then you're going to have to get an, uh, a supplement, uh, a nice mineral and trace mineral supplement to help put back in what we took out. So I, I really agree with you there. I interviewed um, Dr. Klinghart, who's local to me, and he, he works with a, a lot of children on the spectrum come from all over the world to see him. And he gets children that are very having um, very poor health problems uh, to, to be able to, within a year, go back, go to school. Like just a huge transformation. And he says it's it's almost always heavy metals. Like it's just unbelievable. Their body cannot de detox the heavy metals. You know, they were probably given vaccines and, and, and you know, the book, it's controversial whether vaccines cause autism or not, um, depending on who you talk to. Uh, there's lots of information depending on who you talk sure. to. But what we do know for a fact is that there's heavy metals in vaccines. And right. that autistic children have a problem with detoxing. And so they have an accumulation of heavy metals in their neurology. And what Dr. Klinghart brings up is what we're seeing now, the one in 40 children have are on the spectrum. Whereas when you and I were kids, it was one in 10,000. And we're wondering, is it actually autism or are we misdiagnosing a large percentage of the population because they're act the, what they actually have is all the same symptoms of autism, but it's their brain is full of heavy metals. And yeah. if we remove the heavy metals, they no longer are, to, are, are on the spectrum. Yeah, and it's not – I wouldn't put it as a blanket statement for all children or people on the spectrum have heavy metal toxicity. But there is a good portion of folks that that is the case. So I have seen folks on the spectrum that they don't have metals in their system because I'm – we're checking for that. But I have seen – you know, I've had moms call me from the grocery store saying, you know, Johnny just sang and looked in his sister's eyes. He's, you know, first time ever in his life that he's ever had any interaction. And he was vocal and mm. verbal. It was like, you know, true miracles like that. And and for he for him, we were um, chelating him with a an oral um, DMPS or sorry, a topical uh topical cream that we were doing some chelation therapy with. So, you know, it is definitely, you got to rule it in or rule it out is really the, the take home message is anytime you're dealing with neurological issues, we store toxins in our fat. We can call each other fat heads because there's so much fat in our 
head, you know, our brain is fat and we store toxins there. So we definitely have to look at that. Um, so that's on the assessment front. There's more on the assessment front as well. You know, the, and each of these are such, we can unpack each one as well, but on, um, I run a, an ALCAT testing looking at food sensitivities. So mm -hmm. not allergens, but sensitivities. So that's a white blood cells that get exposed to, um, different foods, food additives, molds, etc., And we see what, how the body is responding to these items. And then we also run a gut microbiome test, GI maps, to look at the health of the gut because we're showing, um, you know, there's a whole, you know, the gut is the second brain. We manufacture all of our neurotransmitters for brain health in the gut. Uh, you know, our digestion is so important to that. And we're looking at the whole microbiome. And even there's some theories around glyphosate from Roundup and pesticide use. Uh, you know, killing certain gut bugs that were responsible for, you know, creating dopamine and other nutrients for our brain neurotransmitters. So, you know, there is, there's more and more information coming out that way. So we got to look at the gut too. So those are the four main areas that I look at for brain health uh, for really all of my patients coming in with these diagnoses. Um, and so that assessment, I just feel like people are not getting a proper assessment because it leaves a lot of options out there rather than treating symptoms like you were saying, you know, going Western approach and you're going to get to put on a different bunch of different medications to treat a symptom. This is one way that I found to really trace it down to the root imbalances and address at a very deep, profound level. Absolutely. I want to know why, I mean, obviously it's very important to check gu the gut flora. We want it, we want the healthy microbiome. When someone has a microbiome that's out of balance, maybe they had an antibiotic in the last year and they know they've got really out, out of balance gut flora, or maybe they have small intestinal bacterial overgrowth or candida. Um, wh why does that affect brain health? So on, on that level, so we have the vagus nerve that comes down from, it's a cranial nerve, cranial nerve 10, that comes down, innervates the gut. And there's a lot of different theories on this polyvagal theory. Stephen Porges um, has a component around um, the vagus nerve and it's important to our health and around PTSD and anxiety and um, depression states. So that's one aspect, but the vagus nerve, uh, cranial nerve 10, comes down, innervates the gut. And so there are certain things that get transmitted up and down that nerve in addition to just the nervous system, um, you know, different nutrients, uh, manganese, uh, iron, these things get deposited in the brain. And so there's a connection there. Um, and then also you look at, well, there are certain um, – there are certain uh, probiotics, so gut bugs, that their secretion is the end product that our brains need for proper functioning. So it's so fascinating. The, the research on probiotics is getting so sophisticated mm -hmm. to look at this. And, you know, I, I actually did a lecture to uh, providers. I'm part of this uh, Go Wellness affiliated network of about 40 clinics right now. It's regenerative medicine clinics. And I gave these docs and providers the notes on um, there's research on, you know, sp specific neurotransmitters being produced by the gut bugs. I love it. Yeah. Uh, so cool. I just, I love that w we need these other living beings, this amazing symbiotic relationship. And just thinking of mitochondria, that mitochondria are not us. Like I had a, a guest talk about that they have different DNA, but they're part of us. But it's like you have to think of micro mitochondria like it's like a different being that be joined us. And all the gut flora and then all the healthy bacteria on our skin. And we just keep finding uh, as you know, as science marches on that the, there's even more importance um, that like the, the role that, that these, that this healthy bacteria plays. So it's kind of like a garden, you know, it's an amazing garden where all the healthy bugs are keeping everything in balance, but it's in our body and on our body. And so we've got to think that we've got, we need to 
foster this healthy garden that comes back to how naturopaths consider the whole body and the terrain of the body. We want to fertilize and balance the whole body. It's so cool that our neurotransmitters, that so many of them are made in the gut by the healthy gut bugs. Yeah. I love it. Yeah. Yeah. It's a little bit gross too, right? <laughs> <You> look, <laughs> if you took, uh, you know, all the aerobic and anaerobic gut bugs out, you'd, depending on the individual, about four to seven pounds of material. And, um, you know, it's just like, wow, that is a, that's a whole ecosystem unto itself. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. I love my gut bugs. We're, we yeah, get, we I get along. Too. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I have a friend, um, Dr. Megan Saunders, who she's been on the show many times. She uh, used to be addicted to kombucha back in the back when she was in naturopathic school. She knew, was known as the kombucha lady, and she says that that it takes over your brain. She really believes that that when you start drinking things like for, or you start eating fermented foods, that the gut bugs start making you crave that food more because they want more of that environment in, in oh, itself. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, they secrete right into the bloodstream that goes up to your brain saying feed us. Yeah. Yeah, and so you start craving the kombucha. For me, it's the I love the sauerkraut at, at Costco. They've got great organic sauerkraut at my Costco and uh, my gut just craves it. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. That's a good craving. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. So we've got functional, which is looking at the whole person, meaning looking at their emotional state, their sleep, their their lifestyle, then looking at the assessment of all the things in the inside the person that could be off, uh, heavy metals, viruses, bacteria, um, mold, all the stuff inside their body, uh, their gut flora being off. What's the N stand for? N is for nerve health. So you're looking at specific nutrients for nerve health. And, you know, the most famous is B12, uh, but you've got glutathione there, um, the DHA that we talked about, EPA. There are certain nutrients that are renowned for brain health. Um, so we, you know, we put that in making sure that you have that in your diet. Uh, glutathione is one of those things for your mitochondria. Um, there's NAD as well. Um, treatments for mitochondria health and energy, but also nutrients for nerves. Um, so we look at that aspect to make sure you've got your bases covered there. Um, What's and NAD? Then, NAD is a derivative of vitamin B, uh, a B3, a uh, niacin. Oh, okay. And yeah, and it's um, NAD is big in the longevity movement right now for uh, for energy production. It's a specific food into the mitochondria. Oh God, because I know what NAC is, so I was like, oh, yeah. what's NAD? So that's different. So it's it's support. It's a derivative of B vitamin that supports the mitochondria. Yeah. Hmm. Awesome. Can can we get it from Whole Foods, or do we need to buy it as a supplement? That one is tough. Um, you know, you can get, uh, there are some supplements with dubious claims. Um, and, you know, that one, I do it via IV uh, is the way that I get that one into um, into the body. When someone starts taking the NAD IV, what kind of effects do they notice? Um, they'll notice uh, decreased brain fog more energy, clear thinking, um, along those lines. Ooh, sign me up. That sounds great. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> when you do an IV, do you normally do like a cocktail, um, like a Myers push where it's a bunch of vitamins? Um, well, with the NAD, it's pretty much straight up NAD. You can, you can include those other items in there, um, before or after, but the NAD goes by itself. Got it. Very cool. Now, uh, we'll definitely make sure the links to everything you do is in the show notes of today's podcast, naturecuresclinic.com, yes. where listeners can go. Now, you do take clients all around the world through phone or Skype, but for them yep. to be able to do the IV, they'd have to come to the beautiful city of Portland, Oregon. Yes. To yeah, and I do have people travel in from around the globe. Um, I, they come to Camp Nature Cures, but there is a lot of stuff that we can do, you know, uh, remotely. I do via Zoom. 
um, some of those tele telemedicine things. But you know, to get <clears throat> some of these therapies, you've get, you know, you, I haven't figured out how to deliver it over the internet yet. <laughs> I'm still waiting for like smellovision. Watch the yeah. TV and be able to smell it. Yeah. Um, very cool. Okay, so um, so those those um nootropics are the N. Yeah, and exactly. Then, and then what's the C? The C is for cellular regeneration. And so we're living at a really interesting time where we can do regenerative medicine with stem cells and exosomes um, and these therapies to help the body create new brain tissue. I love it. I love it. So you're using stem cell therapy for the brain. Correct. And what kind of results are you seeing? You know, we are getting folks uh, with Parkinson's. We're having uh, folks tremors halt and reverse. Um, we are having their gait, their walking become more stable, more fluid. We're having their speech improve as well. Uh, so there are some big you know, some reversal of symptoms. Um, again, I'm not claiming that for everybody, um, but we have seen it. We've got clinical evidence of it and we're looking to improve those results for a lot of people. But, you know, my patients got sick of just being serially monitored. They'd go in to the specialist, the neurologist and be run through the battery of tests. And then, you know, basically not even told what was going on, just see you next year. And when they would ask, the doc would say, well, you're getting worse. And they're thinking, well, I could have told you that before I came in here. And, you know, we're just looking to provide some options, alternatives, uh, some hope mm -hmm. that, you know, there is some, um, you know, there there are people working on it, you know, like for instance, on the NAD, there's a researcher down at Scripps University, at University of Florida, and she's doing research on NAD IVs and, uh, and prionic disorders. And so, you know, it's too early for prime time use, but I, I'm saying, you know, look, if we've got this research, we know this is a safe therapy in humans, you know, my folks that have these diagnoses, they don't have 30 to 40 years to wait for the definitive di you know, research to come out. It's like, you know, let's use it now and see what kind of what we can do. I love it. Absolutely. I have seen and heard of actually, because I've interviewed some people about this, um, people with Parkinson's getting great results using med medical marijuana or CBD and hemp. Um, that, you know, when they use the CBD drops that then their shaking goes away. Um, yeah. so they've, have you, have you also seen that some people with Parkinson's have great improvement? Yes. So on that nerve health, CBD, cannabidiol is definitely one of those, um, nerve health supplements. And, you know, when I went to medical school, we did not know about the endocannabinoid system. Um, I did a lecture three years ago at American Academy of Environmental Medicine for cannabidiol for the treatment of anxiety. And you look at, you know, Professor Machulam out of Israel, he's the scientist that discovered the endocannabinoid system. And there are more receptors in the central nervous system. They're called CB1, cannabidiol 1. Um, there are more receptors for that molecule than all of the other neurotransmitters put together, which is just, I mean, it's almost overwhelming to think about. Like we didn't even know about that system when I went to medical school and now there's discovered more receptors for that molecule than all of the other neurotransmitters put together. So that is definitely, yeah, that endocannabinoid system, it needs toned, um, you know, eating, you know, endocannabinoid rich uh, foods that that feed that system and then you know taking cbd is definitely one of those things that um you know again source matters there you want to make sure you've got it's medical grade it's tested um one of the things that the hemp plant does uh it, for it will um rehab uh toxic land so it will pull up um toxins out of the soil so you want to just make sure you've got um a really good source if you are using that um 
again, source matter. So for all of these items, yeah. Yeah. Same with uh, chlorella and spirulina that they, they, yeah. they'll just suck up. I mean, it's great to use chlorella spirulina to clean up waterways and uh, to use the um, hemp plant to clean soil, right? That's good, good, you know, for the, to clean up areas, but not to consume. So we have to make sure that the soil's clean and the water's clean if we're going to consume these crops. I thought it was really interesting that if the body, if we're deficient in our essential fatty acids, we can't produce enough of the, um, basically our body's own CBD. And so then we're CBD right. deficient. So that when someone takes, if someone takes CBD and gets a really great result, it's because they were deficient in it. And if someone takes CBD and it's really good quality and it's tested and we know that it, there's actually CBD in it and they don't get, they don't feel any difference. And maybe they weren't as deficient, but the people who are really deficient who obviously have neurological uh, you know, symptoms, they'll see the biggest shift because their body was deficient. And if they, that also then points to the fact that they are deficient in their essential fatty acids because their body can't produce enough of their own can cannabinoids. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's it. And, you know, and that, that makes a great point in that it's not, I haven't found one thing to be the be all end all in any really condition. And so, you know, I, I think our, our want is like, just give me the one thing, doc. Uh, and it, there's, you know, this, when you're talking about neurodegeneration, it's so multifactorial. You know, when we talk about possible causative agents, definitely levels of toxicity play a role in Parkinson's. That's clearly defined in the literature from pesticides, metals, um, sometimes infections also can be triggering mm. events for folks. And you know, it is, um, you know, so it's, you got to do the multi-pronged approach, uh, but more is not better. Um, more is more. So oftentimes I'll see people come in with the laundry list of supplements or research and saying, I'm taking all of these things. There is this concept that I want to make sure I share with your listeners is that it's called the zheng of the formula or direction. And in Chinese medicine herbs, there's an emperor, empress, then there's generals and then assistants and everybody lines up. So imagine, you know, the emperor empress at the very tip, if it was like a, uh, you know, arrowhead and it's cutting through and moving in a direction. And so whatever plan or program that you get on, you want to make sure you have a direction and that there's a, there's a leading herb or a leading therapy and everything else lines up behind and helps with that motion in a direction. Because otherwise, you know, we kind of get into the shotgun approach of more is better. And I'll see people with like grocery bags full of supplements. It's like, ah, you're, you have to one, digest all of that to process it all, mm -hmm. absorb it all. And then it's pulling your vital force, your vitality in all of these different directions. So the body in its inherent wisdom doesn't really know which way to go with all of that information coming in. So, you know, sometimes, you know, we'll break those up for folks and have them like cycle through, you know, by month or, you know, it really is on, are we getting a result or not? Um, and then the other thing that comes off of that when talking about a zhang of the formula or direction or assembling a program or protocol for an individual, you know, we all have our unique uh, genetic platforms. And that's when you asked about, you know, how does the prions get transmitted or how, you know, are they contagious or are they, you know, can you catch them, quote unquote. You know, why I think we didn't see this huge outbreak of Critzfeld Jacob disease in Europe in the 80s was, well, maybe the genetic platform wasn't susceptible to that. You know, people ate tainted beef. There were three million pounds of beef that got released. Now, a lot of that got recalled, but a lot of that got consumed. And you would, we would have expected to see a bigger outbreak. Now, some say, well, okay, it's like a smoking gun. Maybe then, you know, you've got these prions in there. They haven't been totally activated. Maybe traumas, uh, maybe level of toxicity, uh, you know, and then I would say those definitely influence expression, but also then on top of a more susceptible genetic platform, which then even goes one step further is looking at, okay, well, I got even into looking at ancestral traumas 
turning on genes that then express today. So some of the conditions that we see in modern era aren't even the individual's issue, right? It was their great grandmother's mm -hmm. trauma that set them up for that. And it has definitely made my job as physician so much harder uh, to be able to have the time to spend with somebody talking about all of these levels of care and possible possible root imbalances. So, you know, I definitely wind up talking to my patients about their family lineage, family trees, but not just in a purely genetic sense, but in an energetic sense of getting back into communication with your lineage and your ancestors. Like that's why you're here today. They were here, right? They, that DNA, that information got passed down through time, through your, you know, great grandparents and grandparents and parents and now to you, and then maybe to your offspring. And so, you know, one aspect is, you know, really giving thanks or gratitude, being grateful for it, but then, you know, also acknowledging and letting your, ancestors know like, hey, we're going to stop. You know, I'm not taking the family burden further. Like I'm, mm -hmm. I'm letting that down and, you know, consciously saying it because it makes an imprint in your limbic system and amygdala and your cells. And they, you know, their your body is so responsive and to be able to acknowledge and, and give thanks. And then also, say, I'm not taking this burden any further. I welcome, you know, the energy and the intuition and, you know, all, you know, inspiration, like, you know, bring all of that to me ancestors, but we're going to leave the, the family traumas, the burdens, the, you know, whatever got set up in the past, we're going to leave that now. Like we don't need to carry that forward anymore because it, you know, it, it does get past, you know, it, it just dawned on me like, wow, that's where that curse of seven generations where that comes from it's like we can actually trace out 13 generations now from a trauma that occurred 13 generations ago expressing through a family's lineage so you know it, it's you know doing you know techniques of grounding yourself and deep breathing and i i love playing with the voice and kind of frequencies and singing um, you know, all of these accessing all of the different healing modalities and really putting those in depending on what your specific issue is. But, um, you know, you can really find folks that are tying these things together mm -hmm. and, and designing a program specific to you as an individual. You would love timeline therapy. It's one of the techniques I've been using since 2005. And that's actually the technique where that I'm going to teach on your show. Uh, Dr. Eckel has a great podcast called what the health, what the health. Yes. So listeners are going to now check out your, your podcast. Um, cause they'll love it. And I have a technique to reverse, uh, to, to eliminate, to end, uh, anxiety, to completely cut it off at the root. And it's, it's a timeline therapy technique, but in timeline therapy, we go back to the root cause, the beginning of the gestalt, the chain of n stored emotions in the body that are unresolved. And so the root cause of anger, sadness, fear, hurt, and guilt. Um, and we go back ge in generations. And we've had so many accounts where people will go back and it's um it's a light state of trance. So you're conscious of your unconscious mind. That's the coolest part because people are a little afraid of going under hypnosis. It's not hypnosis, but you become aware of your unconscious. And um, anyone who wants to learn more about how neurology uh, stores uh, um, stores memories, there's two books I love: um, the Heart's Code by Paul Pearsall and um, the Holographic Universe, I forget the author's name, but the Holographic Universe and the Hearts Code are amazing. And they, they both prove that we store memories in our, in our, basically in our cells, holographically through the whole body. It's not just in our brain. And, uh, and we can absolutely pass down memories that there've been numerous accounts where people have had heart transplants and they are able to rem have memories of the person's um, murder to the point where they were able to tell the police what the murderer looked like and they were able to to find them and and um, put them in prison. Um, and so when we have when we have memories from organ transplants, I mean it's just amazing that the body 
there's definitely the esoteric, you know, we have to, we have to just like expand our minds, right? To, yeah. you know, because we're all sort of like thinking that leeches like, you know, a hundred years ago or two or 500 years ago, like, oh, everyone just needs to do bloodletting, right? I mean, just imagine that's kind of where we are when you know, we're all thinking like memories are just stored in the brain, right? But that's, that's common, that's common knowledge, but it's not true. Memories are stored holographically throughout the whole body. And in timeline therapy, when we go to release and learn from and, and, and heal the negative emotions in the body, um, people will have memories from their grandmother. And if the grandmother's still alive, they'll be able to go and confirm them or memories from their mother. And they're healing them stuff when that before they were even born, that they've never been told about, that they never knew. And they're able to go and confirm with their family members after we do the timeline therapy that those events actually happened. So they're stored. We store memories from our ancestors in our body. And of course, we're storing that trauma. Um, so that's like that emotional, mental, a little bit esoteric part of healing. And then on the totally like lab science, you know, part of healing, I was fascinated to hear about this study with mice where they took these beautiful white fuzzy mice. You've probably heard this study and they exposed them to the levels of BPA, bisphenol A, that we are normally exposed to on a daily basis. Every time we touch receipts and drink from plastic bottles with BPA, and what happened is they, they ex, their genes uh, tr transformed. They epigenetically shifted. They no longer grew beautiful, soft white fur. They grew like gnarly yellow fur. They became obese. And that the, and then they stopped giving them the BPA. I think it was just water in their, the BPA was put in their water. They stopped giving it to them. But that this genetic expression lasted, I believe, three generations. So they had basically wow. gnarly yellow mice that were obese for three generations. So just think about the chemicals that your grandparents were exposed to and that changed their neurology or sorry, changed their, um, you know, changed their biochemistry uh, because it um, turned on these different expressions epigenetically. And you're experiencing the result. And now we're seeing that all the toxins that we've been exposed to and our children are be exposed to, like, look at now that over 70% of the population is overweight because of all these obe obesogens and all the exposure to bisphenol A, just one of the many toxins, but that it, it changes our genes. So even if we completely cleaned up our environment, our, our genes for the next few generations might pass on you know, the, the, these characteristics. And that's why we have to be extra careful and extra diligent to be clean and also advocate for a cleaner environment. But then, like you said, do the emotional and mental work as well, because we are seeing a link between de decreasing stress, healing emotions, working on releasing ancestral uh, trauma, and how our genes actually express in the now. So it's so cool that our body our body will respond to emotional healing on a physical level. Yeah, it's so, so profound. And oftentimes, like you're saying, does not get addressed at all. Right, <laughs> so, well, because there's no profit, awesome. they can't make a yeah. drug, right? They, yeah. The pharmaceutical company can't can't pay someone to do research to make a drug to heal your you know trauma from the past. Otherwise, they would have made it. So it's, you know, we, we have to go out and advocate and, and listen to you and your podcast and listen to the experts who are willing to teach us um, about how we can heal our body on a whole level, emotional, mental, spiritual, and energetic and physical, because uh, we're not going to get it from the mainstream media. Right. Yeah. yeah. So I love your fancy. I think, <laughs> I think that's a great <laughs> system. Yes. Uh, I studied with a naturopathic physician who's like, I don't know, he's in his eighties now. And he was a, um, he was a veterinarian physician and a pathologist before he became, and he was a research scientist before he became a naturopath. Um, and he says that most Parkinson's and MS and ALS are a combination of too much oxidative damage to the brain. So eating fried food, standard American diet, and too much oxidative damage, too much oxidative stress to the brain, and not enough of the essential nutrients the body needs to heal the brain. So it's sort of like too much fire in the body um, and not enough nutrients to put out the fire. 
and that he's he's seen great results. I met a woman who went on his sort of basically his program is stop eating stuff that causes the, the damage and uh, and start eating the stuff that helps the body heal and take take, you know, these supplements that you mentioned. And I met a woman who was in a wheelchair one month and the next month was walking and she couldn't believe it. So people are getting great results from avoiding um, the oxidative stress. How, how much has that played a role when you look into this research or when you work with your clients? Are you seeing that oh, getting people yeah, off huge. of fried food, getting people off of even consuming oil in a bottle because that is um, – consuming oxidative stress, right? So what yeah. can we do to prevent oxidative stress in the body so we can help heal the brain? Yeah, well, one one component, when the symptoms have progressed to the point of a tremor, I really, I love hyperbaric oxygen. So mm. I have two hyperbaric oxygen chambers here. So when it has progressed, so as a preventative component, which we all should be working towards preventative, um, is detoxing the body, reducing oxidative stress, uh, getting the antioxidants in there to repair from oxidative stress. Uh, you know, a, we're exposed to 80,000 chemicals a week in the United States. And so there are levels of toxicity out there so that we've got to just go on the offensive of just assume this is occurring. So what do I need to do to um, address it and then reverse it? And so definitely on the, you know, watching the, you know, not cooking with high heat. If you ever see the oil, you know, smoking in the pan, that means you've oxidized it. So, you know, kind of toss that out, start over, cook a little bit lower heat, um, you know, quality of your oils that you're using, um, you know, what you're cooking in, these things really do matter. Of course, the biggest lever is if you're a smoker, stop smoking. Um, if you grew up with smokers, you know, if your parents smoked like mine in the seventies and, you know, riding in the car with the windows up with mom smoking in the car, it's like, oh, geez, what are we doing here? That's where the cadmium comes from, right? That's where a lot of metal toxicity comes from is that inhaled smoke. So, you know, it's really knowing, you know, what, where you grew up, what you got exposed to, and then how to detox that infrared saunas, um, salt baths, grounding activity, deep breathing, mindfulness, meditation, all of these things do play a role there when you're talking about oxidative stress. You know, in environmental medicine, the first thing you learn, the first six items are, the first three are remove, 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 and then it says magnesium, magnesium, magnesium. So when you're talking about environmental causative agents, you first have to stop the damage. So if there's anything that you're consuming or around that's creating oxidative stress or damage, which we know just in general life living, we're getting exposed to stuff. So we've got to, we've got to address that. And then we've got to make sure we've got all of the nutrients for our body to detox. And magnesium is a big cofactor. There are a lot of other nutrients in there, but you know, you look at the cytochrome P450 cycle and that's in liver detoxification, major filter for the body. So getting the nutrients to keep those doors open is the way that I like to talk about that. Um, B vitamins, uh, magnesium are the big players there to keep the phase one and phase two root of elimination open in the liver. Um, sweating, motion activity, uh, getting your circulation going, those things count. And, um, and then really your proper nutrition. Um, that's the setup for, for healthy living and longevity or the health span um, that I see working for a lot of people. Um, yeah. I love it. I had a problem for many years. Um, so I, I don't know if you know my story, but I, um, in my twenties was very, very sick. I had uncontrolled type two diabetes, chronic adrenal fatigue, chronic monthly infections, which I was on almost constant, um, antibiotics for, and I was a mess. Um, I had infertility and I was told I would, I had polycystic ovarian syndrome. I was told I'd never have kids by an endocrinologist. So I was just a mess. And the MDs wanted to put me on lots of drugs. And my 30s, I spent building my body back up. I'm, I'm almost 40 now. I'm 39 and a half. I'm, I'm sort of like accepting my fate. I'm going to be 40 <laughs> soon. I know I'm, I psychologically had to like start preparing myself uh, for the transition into my awesome 40s. 
And um, so I was able to, with natural medicine, uh, I had naturopaths mentor me. And so for the last like seven years, I've actually worked with clients, um, you know, working with these naturopaths and doing this health coaching. But um, it all started about uh, 10 years ago, shopping the perimeter of the grocery store, only buying organic, you know, cutting out sugar and flour, going gluten-free, dairy-free, uh, going on a whole food plant-based diet. So, you know, stopping eating at McDonald's basically. Um, so I, was like, I, think, I think I haven't eaten at McDonald's in eight or 10 years. Um, but I basically went from the standard American diet to a really good diet and taking these supplements, you know, changing, doing emotional healing and mindset, everything, everything. And I was able to reverse all these problems. But every time I went to lose weight, I would taste, I'd wake up in the morning, I taste metal and my, I would smell putrid mm. and it was like burning rubber. I would smell burning rubber and I would taste heavy metal. I would taste like metal in my mouth and my liver would get super inflamed. I went and had um, like all my liver enzymes were like super elevated. My liver was just pissed off. And I went for ultrasounds and they're like, yep, that's a really big liver. It was very inflamed. And so I'd stop weight loss and uh, and then it would everything would go back to normal. <laughs> it was just really frustrating. And I would do it again and again. I'd have to like, I went to lose a bit more weight. After about 20 pounds, it would all come, up, come back and I'd have to stop weight loss. And it finally clicked. It finally dawned on me that it that it was the whatever junk like heavy metals was in my adipose tissue, my fat cells, that when my body started releasing the fat, my mm. liver just couldn't handle it. And whether what I mean, I have MTHFR, um, like 25% on each end. Um, so you know, there's a little bit of a um, gunk there where my body needs a bit of help with meth methylation. Um, but there was something definitely going on. And so I looked into how do I detox these heavy metals? How do I support my liver? I got a sunlight and sauna. It's been over just over a year and I started sweating almost every day. Then I found a magnesium soak where your body actually absorbs grams of magnesium. And you can watch, like if you do the magnesium RBC blood test, you can watch it go up, uh, through soaking. And those two things shifted my whole world. It was amazing. Uh, so definitely I, I attest to the fact that magnesium and sweating in an infrared sauna play a huge role in detoxification. I've done a bunch of other stuff as well that I've noticed changes, but those are probably the two biggest ones for me um, that I saw huge, huge changes. And now when I lose weight, I don't um, have that liver problem, which is really exciting. It took me a whole year of getting in the sauna and soaking in magnesium and uh, doing all, all, like I said, all the other kinds of stuff. Um, but now I don't have that problem. So, you know, we have to, we have to advocate for ourselves. We have to educate ourselves. We have to listen to our body and, and, um, get really curious. Like what's going on? Why is my body doing this? And then go to yeah. a wonderful doctor like you that'll help us decipher the language our body's trying to speak. Perfect. Yeah. Awesome. So you on your website, you have a summit that people can access if they have Parkinson's or if they have neurological issues that they really want to uh, learn more about how they can support themselves and they can go to naturecuresclinic.com. Tell us a bit about your website and what kind of resources are available on it. Well, I have two uh, two handouts on there. One is uh, four signs of cognitive decline, and that's the one that you can access through. You know, you'll get some more information around the Parkinson's Summit that I that I'm holding. Uh, interviewed seven um, experts in different facets of care for neurodegeneration, and have had got some really great feedback from folks and uh, appreciation and uh, just assembling this information for them. Um, and then the other uh, guide that I have is on pain and pain management. So the part of the regenerative medicine uh, and regenerative stem cell therapies is it's really renowned for regrowing joints, uh, knees and hips and backs and brains. And so I, I've got a guide on there as well. If you've got anybody that's listening with pain or pain patterns, that that is up mm. on the site as well. Very cool. Yeah. Awesome. And then people can work with you as well, naturecuresclinic.com. But if they want to come to you in Portland, tell us a bit about what was this camp you have? 
Oh, yes. So I call it Camp Nature Cures. And so I do have people fly in from around the globe. You know, Portland is a destination city now for food and, you know, culture. It's a really fun place to be. So, you know, it's kind of on the radar. But then we also have our Nature Cures Clinic. We're right downtown at 10th and Taylor, right next to the library and centrally located. And we plug people into, you know, great restaurants and, um, you know, the arts, etc. But, you know, you come out for intensives. So I've had folks fly in uh, from as far away as New Zealand at this point. Um, and we've got, um, you know, we'll, we'll set people up with a brain regenerative program. It's a 10-day program. People come in for the, all, the battery of tests and treatments. We're doing, um, you know, we're doing stem cell regenerative therapies. Uh, acupuncture, Chinese herbs. We get them in the hyperbaric chamber twice a day, so three hours a day of hyperbarics. Uh, we're doing the IVs that help heal the body. They deal with that oxidative stress uh, that you were talking about with the brain and you know, really help the body. We give the body all of the information it needs to heal itself. So um, they come, you know, folks come in and come to Camp Nature Cures because these therapies, we can't deliver them online um, energetically yet. Uh, we're looking for that, though, <laughs> with quantum, uh, quantum physics and uh, that increased <laughs> curve that's happening. But for now, we deliver them in person here at the clinic. Yeah. I love Portland for the food scene as well, but I'm looking for the vegan and the raw vegan. I'm just so, oh, yeah. I get so excited. I'm like, yeah, let's go to a raw vegan restaurant. I, had a, yes. I have a raw vegan friend that used to live in Portland and he'd, he'd brag about the raw vegan scene. And um, I'm pretty jazzed about all the healthy food that's available in Portland, but they do have bacon donuts for those that aren't vegan. Right. Oh, uh, gosh. Yeah, they... Bacon. They do yes. have, yeah, they do have a lot of other kinds of foods in Portland. Well, very cool. I'm super excited that we were able to bring this information today. And you're welcome back on the show anytime because you can talk about, you can teach about allergies and asthma and orthopedics. I'd, I'd love to have you back on the show to dive into those topics as well. Oh, that would be awesome. Thank you so much. Yeah, absolutely. Very cool. Is there anything left unsaid that you want to make sure that you convey before wrapping up today's interview? Yeah, you know, one of the big things that um, that is a message of mine and just what I've been through is um, it's about love. And, you know, just if you haven't, we want to spread more love and tell those around that you, that you love them and give them big hugs and, uh, you know, really look in their eyes because, you don't, we don't know how long we're on the planet together and it's such a special time to have and kind of a sacred time. So, you know, I, just a message of more, we, we, I would love to see more love out there. And so it starts with us and, uh, you know, just go hug some people, your, your loved ones and make sure they know that you love them. That's yeah. beautiful. Thank you so much, Dr. Greg Eckel. It has been such a pleasure having you here today. Listeners can go to your website, naturecuresclinic.com. Of course, that link will be in the show notes of today's podcast, alerntrell.com. And they can check out all those uh, freebie, wonderful, um, you know, in the information Guides, that you're giving yeah. away. Absolutely. They should sign up on your website to get more information from you. They should come visit Camp Nature Cures <laughs> and get some awesome, <laughs> fun treatments. Yes. And of course, they can um, call you up and have a Zoom call with you over the internet. It's been great having you here. Can't wait to have you back on the show. Thank you so much, Ashley. Are you looking to optimize your health? Are you looking to get the best supplements at the lowest price? For high quality supplements and to talk to someone about what supplements are best for you, go to takeyoursupplements.com and one of our fantastic true health coaches will help you pick out the right supplements for you that are the highest quality and the best price. That's takeyoursupplements.com. Takeyoursupplements.com. That's takeyoursupplements.com. Be sure to ask about free shipping and our awesome referral program.